the Hand Lab online course, Nuances of Flexor Tendon Rehabilitation. So the word excursion used in relationship to flexor tendons means the movement of the tendon relative to its surrounding bed of tissue. Loading is necessary to create movement of the tendon, but the loading itself does not enhance healing. With muscle contraction, there is maximum proximal excursion of the muscle. Between days four and seven, that level of resistance remain consistent. This is a cadaver example of a surgeon placing both a core and a peripheral suture with a video courtesy of Dr. Lalonde, shows a patient actively flexing through limited range. Is the difference between the amount of force you need to move a tendon and the amount of force that either creates gapping or rupture. It is no longer appropriate for an active flexion protocol to position the wrist in a significant amount of flexion. During finger extension, the tension on that repair side is protected because the lumbrical is reducing it. Going from that position into further flexion gives you proximal glide. Tang often uses a tongue depressor to place the MP joint in greater flexion than the orthosis to facilitate an emphasis on active and passive full finger extension. In the image on the right, you see that there is no DIP joint flexion. Simply touching the fingers of the other hand does not engage DIP joint flexion. The one that includes the wrist becomes more relevant as we're thinking about the more proximal zones. Here compiled are all the variables that would affect a flexor tendon repair within zone three. Therapy always begins with passive range of motion first, regardless of the protocol. And if active range of motion has been chosen, it is important that initially that range of motion is partial.